Greetings, I'm Solar Skelly, and welcome to Skelly's Spook Fest. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I know the one I'm recording at the latest at this present time, but uh, yeah, kind of swapping a few things around here and there in terms of games, which you'll probably notice once you uh, get around to seeing Resident Evil 3. Hmm, Neversoft, what could this be? Yeah, this is Apocalypse from 1998. Not to be confused with the movie, the I think was directed by Michael Bay that came out the exact same year. Uh, at least I think I haven't seen that movie, but uh, yeah, this is Apocalypse. A 1998 video game developed by Activision, then handed off to Neversoft, and it's mainly just noticeable for being a Bruce Willis vehicle. And I guess one of the earlier examples of celebrities starring in video games? Something that's a little bit more prevalent today. But I mean, back then, Bruce Willis was a huge deal compared to today, where he's kind of in like a sort of not give a shit sort of acting kind of thing. Whatever, here's a cutscene. There was a time when science was my religion. Now, religion has become my science. And my sword. Only one man, my oldest student, now my sworn enemy, knows my plan and knows how I raised my horsemen from the dead. Death, plague, War, beast, my four horsemen of the apocalypse, arise! The world must perish in our hands before we perish. Peace, death, tear the flesh from the heathen bones, plague, devour them with darkness. War, cast their corpses to the fire. Beast, turn their cities to ash. Go forth, my horsemen! Judgment Day is at hand! Thus is the river! Wake up, convict! You're on! Position 992B, Kincaid Trey. You have persisted in the dangerous ways of the sciences in direct violation of the 12 recommendations of the Reverend. How would you plead? I'm gonna stick my foot so far up your Guilty! Your I sentence you to death. May the Lord have mercy on your soul. Amen. Boy, you're gonna have some bad dreams tonight. <laughs> Nanotech in action. Welcome to paradise. Yeah, as you can no doubt tell by the cutscenes, uh, things are a little bit calm, and well, that does tie in a lot with the game's development, which I did cover and, uh, well, again, I did read what's the Apocalypse review I did recently, well, not recently, but a couple of years ago now, and, uh, hmm. I guess I will go into a little bit more detail in terms of the game's development cycle, which was rather hellish, but again, the cutscenes I think are probably the things that suffer the worst, because as is, uh, as was initially revealed in the game, yeah, Bruce Willis wasn't the main character, he was initially a sidekick named Trey Kincaid, who was, well, basically the same character, except he was aiding this prisoner character, uh, who that would have been, and who exactly it would have affected, I have no idea, but again, that's diving into different uh, things here and there. Anyway, point is, as the cutscene established, you play as Trey Kincaid, a scientist and a guy who used to work for the for the Reverend dude. But alas, disagreements abound, and uh, well, religion and science seem to be a pretty big taboo in this uh, world right here. No, because it's not as if that isn't a thing today. Kind of. Well, I suppose we've got plenty of other issues to deal with at this present time, which will hopefully be resolved soon. At least I hope, anyway. Uh, people in the future, assuming there is a future. Greetings. I hope you're doing better than we are right now. But in any case, if there is one thing that is the saving grace of Apocalypse and, uh, well, just an ode to the talent of the people at, uh, Neversoft, or at least in past tense, because Neversoft is no longer with us, yeah, the gameplay is actually really fucking slick and smooth. Again, it functions in a similar manner to... Hmm, how would I put this? I wouldn't say shoot 'em up, but it has a very similar sort of mindset, I'd say. Like, when you have enemies on all sides, they're blasting machine guns and all that kind of stuff at you, and uh, you use the X, circle, triangle, and square buttons to basically fire your weapon in a specific direction. 
Like, I mean, you can press triangle and circle to shoot diagonally, you can, you know, do all that kind of stuff. Again, it's very fluid and focused, but it has a very easy pick up and play sort of mentality at it, and, you know, from a basic control standpoint, using the D-pad or analog stick to move around, it's slick, smooth, and my god, it's actually really fun, and this first level really does showcase a lot of that. Like, I mean, the camera is not an issue at all. Again, it's very pulled back from Bruce Willis, so while you not, might not be seeing his sexy animated mug circa 1998, you are going to be seeing, well, everything that you need to see from your enemies firing their weapons at you, which are, again, color-coded to give you an idea of where they are. And, uh, well, the auto-aim is actually pretty sweet, so... Again, you should have no problem hitting your targets even if you don't have an aiming vertical. And I'd say, like, out of a lot of PS1 games, in terms of how it would have aged from a gameplay perspective, I'd say this game aged actually really fucking good. Which I suppose makes it a very big tragedy in the sense of... Well, the fact that this game really didn't have the time to refine some of its rougher edges, and at the same time also that uh, nothing ever really became of it. And I think a lot of that can be placed squarely on the whole star talent they had involved with Bruce Willis, because... Well, I mean, given the ending of the game, I'm not going to spoil anything. It's, uh... Yeah. Then again, that also might have delved into what the prisoner character might have been used for, but I'll say no more on that. As far as what I use Bruce Willis for in this game, like, I mean, he does have his voice lines, which, uh... Well, again, as you can probably tell by the intro cutscene, they do kind of feel like they were edited around, because... Yeah, a, lot of the, a lot of these lines were present in the original Activision version. But, uh... Yeah, it feels like a lot of cutting was done, and I'm pretty sure they didn't get Bruce Willis to re-record some new dialogue, because, well... He was a highly paid actor, video games weren't quite the expensive beast to make that they are today, so, uh... Yeah, Activision wanted to save their pretty pennies, so to speak. Uh, but I mean, I will say, like, they kind of use him in a similar capacity to Dana Gould from the Gex series in the sense that they'll have him record a couple of his one-liners, which are all very die-hard and John McClane-esque in terms of style. Uh, that is to say, like, 90s John McClane. I suppose also live free and die-hard John McClane as well, rather than A Good Day to Die Hard, which is, honest to God, the worst movie in that series. Yeah, but I think the less said about that movie, the better. Kind of a shame that Die Hard 6 was cancelled, since Willis apparently wanted to fix out a lot of those problems, but... Oh, uh, well. And what you also might be seeing there, with the very realistic-looking face being transmitted onto the computer screen, which I'm guessing must have been a developer, because they've kind of filmed them in shadows, and, uh... Well, the acting is kind of amateurish. Yeah. Uh, again, it's all to do with the technology that they implemented into this game, which I believe was entirely Neversoft's doing, because they had this technology where they could basically... Uh, I'm not really too sure what it is, I'm gonna say overlay for the lack of a better phrase, but they basically overlay live-action footage into, you know, the in-game graphics itself, so what you'll be seeing here is, you know, recorded footage of, you know, live-action people, and as you will soon be seeing, in a few levels' time, some music videos by popular artists at the time, like Poe, System of a Down, Gear Whore, and uh, I think Snod as well. Which you can, it kind of speaks for its error, because Snot was a very short-lived band. Uh, sadly, because they were actually really fucking good. Like, I mean, if you're into, like, funky new metal kind of sounds, I'd honestly highly recommend Snot. They are fantastic. Especially the titular track Snot and, uh, Stupid, which is one of the tracks they included in this game. Funky stuff, really great. And, uh, I'm just kind of sad the singer passed away before the band could really take off. But I suppose if there is anything else I could say is that while the gameplay loop is fun, it is also very sparse in terms of, you know, being a general first-person shooter kind of deal. Like, I mean, you'll have enemies to face down, you know, you'll be ramming through guards, mutants, and all sorts of abominations you'll be seeing in this very uh, dystopian Blade Runner-esque future, but at the same time, there is also uh, the factor of context, which puts this on more of the gamey side of the video game rather than having a really developed world or, you know, intriguing storyline to really follow through on. A part of that I do think was budget, but another of which I do think is kind of... well, a lack of forethought, really. I mean, I understand that this was 1998 before, like, a lot of heavily story-based games were really a thing. I mean, again, Metal Gear Solid, keep in mind, is an exception rather than the rule. So, uh... Yeah, I'm not necessarily too sure what to think about that. It's... It's a drawback that I can kind of understand, but at the same time I'm also kind of disappointed with, and I did echo very similar sentiments in the review, but I suppose I'll save that for a little bit later. In terms of what sort of bosses you're going to be facing, you do face off against 
well, obviously the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse that you saw on the uh, intro screen, but you also do have a uh, slight mini-boss kind of things like this right here. You know, facing off against tanks and uh, well, the fact that you can take down these things with your uh, all sorts of weaponry is cool. Like, I mean, if there's one thing I can praise Apocalypse for is the fact that it's very action-focused, it's very... It keeps the pace going, which is what makes this game really fun and addictive, in kind of like a Doom kind of way, really. And again, like, I've got a lot of fondness for this game that I haven't really seen uh, from other people, others just kind of calling it kind of troll, which saddens me a lot. Over there, that little poop looks safe. And you know what, I will say, like, for what few appearances that Bruce Willis really does have in this game, in terms of, you know, voice acting and all that kind of stuff, they do get their mileage out of his, uh, personality, so to speak, which, uh, again, is something that you kind of seldom see throughout, like, a lot of other, like, big Hollywood actors breaking into video games. Again, like, I mean, I'm gonna be pointing fingers at Kiefer Sutherland, uh, Whoever the fuck that, like, Hollywood actress, his name was from the Ratchet and Clank 2016 thing. And, uh... I'm trying to think of someone else. I'm thinking John Renault when he was in, uh, like, Onimusha 3, was it? I don't know, like, I think a lot of video games that tend to have, like, star power like this don't really tend to use their star power as good as they really can. Like, I mean, I can only really name the amount of games that do it off the top of my hand, which would be this. X-Men Origins Wolverine, since that had Hugh Jackman voicing Wolverine in that game. And, uh... Wow, that's about all I can really think of at the moment. Uh, but anyway, like, in terms of what you'll be facing off down in these sewers, it's basically just, you know, giant rats, uh, people shooting at you. Again, like, I mean, the future in s itself isn't really that developed, but again, you can tell by a lot of the architecture and, like, a lot of the uh, Philip K. Dick sort of influence structures that, again, it is very used, it is very downtrodden, and I would have loved to have seen a lot more from this, because... Well, you only really get vague teasings from, uh, you know, sparse lines of dialogue, which I feel kind of hinders the game in feeling like this big, living, breathing world that I think the developers really wanted it to be. I mean, I guess maybe they wanted to opt for more of an action movie focus as opposed to, well, I suppose whatever the original intent was back when this was being developed by Activision, so... Yeah, and it just leaves me feeling a little bit sparse. So I suppose... I don't know, like, I suppose it hits kind of an 80-20 thing in terms of the... of how fun the game is from gameplay, but also in terms of, like, what it kind of fucks up a little bit in story, and... I don't know, like, I'd say this game's pace is brisk enough so that, you know, you'll be going through all these levels, like, stock as they are in terms of, like, sewers, city, graveyard, all that kind of stuff. But, you know, you'll also have, I don't know, a fun time for what you have, and... Again, if a simple, fun time just drinking a bottle of Pepsi and having a good time on a Friday night is what you're looking for, I think this game will deliver that to you in spades. Which I suppose is about the extent of the gameplay that I can really talk about, save for a few other aspects uh, yet to bring up in terms of some of the bosses we'll be facing up against, but yeah, what you see is what you get here, and if, again, if any of this looks enjoyable to you, I think you have a pretty nice time. And I suppose if I could also talk about anything else, would also be the weapons, which you can switch between and uh, have a finite amount of ammo, obviously. Your basic machine gun is basically infinite, and you know, I'd say it does a decent job in getting the job done in terms of mowing down enemies, but again, the weapons you get to play with are pretty sweet. Like, I mean, you have, uh, you know, very laser, like, uh, how can I put this? Like, laser, like, uh, like sort of like uh, beam-based weapons, that's it. Sorry, my brain's a bit slow today. Yeah, like, I mean, you do have beam-based weapons that you can use to carve down small fry, which is uh, still like the portable key, portable key, portable key, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, dude, focus. Uh, the, um, particle beam cannon, you have the flamethrower and all that kind of, and the, uh, rip laser. And then you also have, like, you know, rocket launchers, grenade launchers, you know, which are there to basically deal heavy damage and all that kind of stuff. Uh, pulse laser, which is basically a, an upgraded, more powerful version of your machine gun, and, uh, well, I mean, again, the weapon set is kind of typical for a game of this ilk, but... Again, I guess I guess mainly just down to the very 90s sounding uh, names they have for them and just the general effectiveness they have against enemies, it's pretty sweet, man, so... Yeah, you got a nice variety of weapons and, uh, it's cool. Yeah, and I suppose it's also really the, um, again, to talk about the quotes again, like, it's also really... 
Well, I mean, I suppose it's also very stock. I mean, I get, I, I'm guessing there probably wasn't going to be really any sort of sparkling repartee between the prisoner and Bruce Willis because. Uh, from the limited gameplay footage you could see of the demo uh, from the Activision one that was cancelled, yeah, I don't seem to remember the prisoner talking at all, so I don't know if there was going to be like some back and forth banter between the prisoner and Bruce Willis, or if it was just going to be, you know, uh, Bruce Willis doing the talking while the prisoner is just a silent protagonist that you just haplessly follow, so... Yeah, uh, it just seems kind of strange and contradictory. Uh, although... Hmm. I don't really know what to say in that aspect. I might have to do a little bit more research after this part's done. But yes, as you can also see, the satanic imagery, which uh, is quite fitting for Halloween season, which is uh, also quite fitting for when the game came out on October 31st, 1998, I believe. It does also make me very curious as to what this sort of religious angle in the future is going to be about. Because, like, I mean, as you'll end up learning in a later cutscene, like, the Reverend is actually a quite a prolific leader at this point. Like, I mean, he was a scientist, but I guess maybe there's a certain portion of the civilization that is led by uh, religion, whether that be satanic or, uh, you know, uh, Christianity, or maybe something similar, like a mishmash of that kind of thing. Again, you can't really say for certain with a lot of this world building, because not a lot of it's really that developed, so it just kind of leaves you feeling a little bit, I don't know, hollow. Like, I mean, I'm pretty sure a game like this would probably do quite well nowadays, although I kind of suspect that probably changed up the gameplay style to be a little bit more generic in terms of, like, the Resident Evil 4-inspired third-person shooter kind of thing that we've been, you know, that we've been seeing with games like Uncharted or uh, Dead Space or Gears of War or some shit, so... Um, I'd be hesitant to say what a more modernized version of Apocalypse would be like in the unlikely event it ever happened, but... Well, I guess Bruce Willis gave his review right there with the fact that it would be shit. And I mean, more to the point, like, I mean, I don't think Bruce Willis would come back for something like this, so... No, who knows, really? Because, I mean, like I was mentioning earlier, Bruce Willis has kind of taken a bit of a hit in terms of his filmography recently. Like, I mean, he's mostly been just doing a bunch of director video kind of stuff recently. Uh, not quite to Steven Seagal levels, mind you, but... Uh, it's... Hasn't really been too impressive, just see the movie The Setup for proof of that alone. I don't really know what to say, but anyway, let's torch these alligator mutant things and be on our merry way. So on that note, I'm Sol to Scully, keep a new metal, and I will see you next time for The City Levels and Apocalypse. Catch you next time, dudes and dudettes, and I will see you later. Bye bye <laughs>